developments in this country, especially uh, the fight against uh, corruption in Nigeria. Uh, yeah. it, is, it has taken several twists now. Uh, we are beginning to see high-level exposures among public office holders, especially on uh, allegations of mismanagement of resources meant for the development of uh, the citizens. Uh, the, the recent happening at the NDDC has left much to be desired. Uh, Nigerians are beginning to see high-level corruption, monumental corruption on a very large scale uh, that has been uh, pervading, if you like, uh, or permeating our system generally. How are you, what, what exactly is um, happening if, if, if you look at the system? Why is the system so endemic in corruption? regarding what we are seeing in Nigeria. Mm. As a matter of fact, what we are witnessing is a chip in the iceberg. Mm. Uh, we are yet to hear here the, 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 the gangantium uh, 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 factor of corruption in this country. What we are seeing is a chip in the iceberg because it is only those sectors that the first light has uh, really flashed on that we have even seen. Uh, the truth of the matter is that so long we take politics as a game of investment, so long we take capitalism as a way of life, so long we take fight against corruption as uniform responsibility of the government, so long the government will shy away from penalizing and prosecuting and ultimately dealing with the tanker of corruption, especially the public corruption. So long we take nepotism, we mm -hmm. put over and above national interest and competence and credibility. Mm -hmm. Then so long we are yet to see even the words in the fight against corruption. Hmm. What we are seeing in Nigeria is a present decline of morality in Nigeria. That is what we are seeing. Hmm. Section 15, subsection 5 of the Constitution says that the state shall hmm. fight all forms of corruption and abuse of power. Hmm. The state here means the president himself, his council of ministers, the president has passed section 130 of the Constitution, hmm. his ministers have passed section 147 and 174 of the Constitution. The governors, the ministers, the ambassadors, the councillors, everybody from the academia to the media to the security forces, everybody in Nigeria that is earning his money from the consolidated revenue fund is part of the state. So long we don't see this as a collective responsibility to fight corruption, so long we will continue to shy away from the responsibility of fighting. Yeah. And then we have got a political system that is capitalist, that is essentially contractocratic electronic type of corruption mm. whereby you have to even pay before you can even be considered for appointment or not even for appointment for election, for elective mm. office political parties will not be selling forms into millions mm. they will be raising billions from the aspiring candidates mm. and at the end of it it is the sole responsibility of whosoever is aspiring to mm. spend his money to campaign for it mm. and at the end when you get into political office you look at it from the angle of the quantum of money you have invested in coming into that particular business. And yeah. that is the reason okay. why you see them more of trying to recoup investment yeah. rather than thinking of it as a scheme of a national service in mm. the interest of the nation. Right. Most of the political functionaries, whether elected or appointed, mm. see their seat as avenue to make it rather than avenue to serve, mm. rather than responsibility. They don't even believe that in the year and after, Someone else will hold them accountable for whatever they, 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 they are doing on this world. Okay, but Barista, uh, yes, we, we dwell so much on the personalities perhaps. Those who are uh, at the helm of affairs, you know, uh, the fault line in terms of appointment and uh, how appointment has become for the highest bidder is an investment. You have to get there and recoup, you know, your investment. It is done, you know, because of nepotism at some point. It is done for patronage and all of that. But we're talking about yes. a system. There is an established system that is that should have been properly secured, you know, uh, to guarantee service. Uh, uh, I mean, service delivery, so to speak. Yes. Now, but yes. you realize that as soon as uh, you know, political. I mean, these politicians are appointed into office. Uh, yes. they, they, they they keep aside, you know, the contractual uh, uh, agreement, if you like, with the people. Uh, setting aside even the acts establishing their various agencies, departments, and of course uh, 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 commissions and so on. And then 
see the appointment as an avenue for them to amass wealth, you know, recklessly without recourse to the primary yes. responsibility of their appointment. Yes. Take for instance what is happening at the NDDC. Yes. There has been a lot of I mean, concern regarding how the act itself was changed along the line to pave way yes. for political opportunism and, and patronage uh, instead yes. of service delivery. Now, the initial contractual agreement or the act established uh, establishing the commission indicates that uh, the people should decide you know, as to what should be done in their respective areas in terms of yes. uh, projects and so on. But it, it was changed along the line to become you know, an agency, a commission that is supervised by people in government, uh, you yeah. know, appointments are, I mean, made not based on merit, but based yeah. on political patronage and all of that. Is it that the system has been planned or programmed, you know, specifically uh, to allow for this monumental corruption? No. We, we, we have evolved a culture that is anathema to our national ethics. And the same to sections 24, 23, 21, and 17 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We have evolved the culture of he who pays the price is the truth. We have evolved the culture of Godfatherism. We have evolved the culture whereby there are certain people that if you don't play to the authority, then you will, you will not succeed in getting yourself on power. For example, let's take the first question. The Constitution section 174 clearly gives the responsibility mm. on the Attorney General of the State Nation to prosecute, to prosecute all offenders mm. of criminality. Mm. And the same section also gives him the power, you understand, to investigate all these kind of things. But in a situation where by giving the Attorney General himself is facing series of uh, accusations, what prevents the President to using his power? Not only the attorney general, any other person whose deed is facing some allegation, what prevents him from asking them to clear aside like the case of Mark, so that they would be able to there would be thorough investigation. And then there is this issue of our constitution too that is helping uh, matters wrongly. For example, section 36, section 5, that says all con uh, huge offenses you commit in the country, mm. you are considered a clear person until adjudicated. Uh, guilty by a competent court of law. Hmm. So as a result of which in the country wherever you have, uh, a poor man cannot get justice in this country as we are now because of the course of adjudication of matters in our courts. So hmm. in a situation wherever you have such that somebody will amass billions through corrupt practices and they will get the most sophisticated lawyers that will use their sense of brilliance and technicality to force justice in the court of law. The mm. second you didn't set the parameter for natural justice. And then the citizens read as well. The since 24 gives them onerous duty to hold the government accountable. Mm. The since 23 talks about national ethics. The tolerance and the respect for us to, to, to contribute towards nation building. Mm. Our civil society groups, our private individuals, how many of them are prepared to take government accountable? We mm. must really be seen to be taking government accountable when it comes to the issue. Mm. against corruption is a collectivism uh, phenomenon. It's yeah. something that everybody should put hands on death to see to it. And then when you take again uh, 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 the comment of the president when he said he had three uh, cardinal principles. Mm. A fight against corruption, uh, 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 issue of insecurity and revolution of the economy. Mm. These things are not anything new. Mm. Because section 15 of section 5 already has um, uh, put it on every government officer to fight mm. corruption. Yeah, section uh, 15 of section 2 says you must, uh, security and welfare is a primary responsibility of the government. Right. And at the same time, the state talks about economy responsibility. Now, mm. when you talk about all these kind of things, they fight against corruption, the responsibility on the state, including the governors, including the courts, the judiciary should see itself as part and parcel of the government. If mm. the judiciary can displace the power of law to make it, by providence of section 4, section 11, section 58, of section 1 mm. of the Constitution, and establish special uh, uh, court against corruption in Nigeria, and then give death penalty against perpetrators of corruption, give life imprisonment against perpetrators of corruption, let it to be a court of summary trial rather than a court of technicalities that will come and use technicalities. Mm. Give it a court of summary trial whereby the owners will be shifted mm. on the accused person 
to prove why he will not be consulted to them on yeah. account of corruption. Uh, but they are still standard councils in Eastern Europe whereby mm. nobody can even attempt to join a company of the public treasury because mm. of the stringent penalties there. But here we are giving corruption list studies. Mm. The executive, the legislature, and the judiciary, none of them is, uh, is, is ready to really take the bull by the horn because right. of the fear mm. that uh, the scale can bank on him. So we really uh, but, 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 uh, but those but those in power accountable so yeah. that we see really robust uh, a process against corruption. Um, but Barista, talking about collectivism in the fight against corruption, demanding for yeah. accountability. Uh, who, so, would, who would demand for accountability or who would check the excesses of the office holders or the political political appointees when for instance uh, the national assembly members who have an oversight function uh, to look into the activities of some of these ministries departments and agencies are also accused of taking part in sharing the proceeds if you like uh, either in form of contracts or in form of uh, uh, you know uh, some some gifts or even Outright cash distribution, you know, for instance, uh, to side, I mean, to, to, to cover up. Again, if we're talking about the civil society organization, a number of them are also uh, said to be uh, involved in all of this. And you find out that they can hardly come out, you know, uh, to talk about this or to expose this criminality. Um, you talk about the legal system, which is not also helping matters. Uh, Nigerians, the ordinary Nigerians who are on the age are also contributing, you know, to in shielding the corrupt officials uh, who, who are being investigated. You find out that, for instance, what is happening now in the NDDC, um, there, there, there is already, already reports of, you know, protests going on, demonstrations for and against. And these are same Nigerians who have been shortchanged, you know, coming out to support or to, I mean, uh, to, to shield, you know, those that have been investigated. So how do we collectively come to fight this corruption when all of us seems to be uh, at fault? No, it's, it's very simple. Mm. It's very simple. The nation, everybody in the nation should resolve that we want evolution of a system whereby the son of a poor man who doesn't know anybody, who doesn't have anything, has become somebody in Nigeria without the patronage of anybody. Mm. So long we don't reach that level, so long we have not started it. In a situation whereby we continue to uh, embrace this uh, 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 cancerous capitalist type of democratic system, mm. whereby money is the determinant of everything, so long we will continue to fall into this upstream of corruption. Nigerians should really come out and demand for a change, an amendment in the constitution, so that we will be able to have a change in the political system. This capitalist system will really not continue anywhere because capitalism. Essentially, as in the show, the 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 of corruption, the uh, 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 midwife of corruption is capitalism, mm -hmm. and we embrace capitalism, and we go about uh, 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 saying that we will fight corruption. Mm -hmm. It is virtually impossible for us to fight corruption mm -hmm. under this system, except mm -hmm. except if we return back. Mm -hmm. President Buhari, I expect him based on his promise to really consider the type of lieutenant he is appointed, mm -hmm. so that. People with ethical background of discipline, people with national interest over and above their primordial considerations, people that are putting the interest and the state of the nation over and above their personal state are coming on board to really give exemplary leadership. Mm -hmm. It is exemplary leadership that we want because the fish gets rotten from the head. If the fish, if the fish is not uh, having its correct head, then the remaining body will now will not be in its own correct the situation of death. We want exemplary leadership by the president himself, by everybody, and we want exemplary leadership, especially by the judiciary. We want to see corrupt people read. How many people have we been seeing them being hung from 1999 today? That really is a laughable matter if you come to say you want to buy corruption. Uh, well, we have all yeah. the instruments, but without the solution. But, but all the reports, all the investigations, mm. the National Assembly has tried, for example, hundreds of reports they conducted of the investigation of this type of MDDC are there. I have not seen one of such reports implemented by the presidency or by the federal uh, executive arm of the government. I have not seen even the white paper. So, so long we will take issue of the investigation of reports like this NDC, we will just do it to really bring down the tension and then keep the report in the cooler without bringing it to the front corner for execution, for implementation, or even white paper. Then so long we will continue to play a minute.
mm. with the doctrine of fight against corruption in uh, Nigeria. Yeah, Barista, you're talking about an ideal situation where the president should be able to, uh, you know, uh, sit tight, I mean, um, should be able to determine or, or appoint lieutenants who are uh, seen to be selfless, who are who have the country at heart, for instance. But you're also talking about the, the capital intensiveness nature of our politics. Um, the president himself has to rely perhaps on people, the money bags, you know, uh, to support his uh, aspiration. Uh, a number of these people we are talking about must have had their way uh, into government uh, uh, or got government appointment as a result of their also, uh, I mean, what they were able to do, you know, to, to support, you know, the emergence of the government and all of that. How can we have an ideal situation in, in, in this kind of quagmire? Well, at the moment, the moment the citizenry, the moment the citizenry mm. decide to maintain their personal integrity. Mm. For example, all over the world, it is only in Nigeria on election day you see somebody mm. voicing a leaf on his head that he is for sale. Somebody will come and give him 200 naira, 500 naira, or at most 1,000 naira, and then he will mortgage his own conscience for the next four years. Somebody will come and give him and detect where he will go. So long we don't uh, uh, protest such type of things, and it will come and be done in the clear scene of the people while they are on queue. Somebody is coming to do that to really be mercilessly dealt with there and then. And then a political party that evolves and brings about this notion of state by a form for so 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 billions or so 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 millions because you want to appear for an election. Mm. To really be about that people should always, always uh, uh, be, 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 what do you call it? People mm. should, should always uh, uh, run against taking illegal money, run against taking dirty money. For example, if somebody takes money and goes to a community, mm. people will be, should be jubilated, people will be hailing him. And then if somebody is there as the senior person, no matter how clean you are, you are in your you are in the city room, no matter how clean you are, if your younger brother is there who has amassed corrupt money, your brothers will come and cross over your legs and go and discuss with him on how to marry out your younger sister, not minding anything simply because the other person doesn't have money. So our reorientation of values, our value system has gone down. Section twenty one of section twenty three of the Constitution talks about the national ethics, tolerance. Uh, religious uh, 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 duties, the issue of want to really promote human dignity and respect to our culture and tradition. Mm -hmm. We have abandoned the culture and tradition of Nigeria as part section 21 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So people must really eschew all these uh, 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 tendencies to be corrupt. Mm -hmm. People should really develop sickness against anything that is dirty. If the mm -hmm. government cannot really fight corruption, people should organize themselves around a political party that has ideology. Mm -hmm. None of these parties we are seeing is different because none of it has ideology. None of this has documented and seriously constructed blueprint of ideas on the effort of policies they want to execute to the people. Mm -hmm. People should gather themselves led by possibly civil society or labor movement so that we will have a political party that will really champion the cause of citizenry, champion the cause of entrenchment of people's supremacy. We mm. need such type of political party to be established in Nigeria so mm. that masses will be educated. Political mm. parties have abdicated their responsibility of giving education to the citizenry. People mm. do not even understand the differences in all these political parties we are seeing. They are rather capitalists being confused by bringing about about 90 political parties don't confuse the electorate. How can you bring a political party that is as big as uh, very yeah. much and then say, I mean, uh, a bond of paper that is as big as very much because of the numerity of political parties and yeah. expect the citizens to, to have the sense of judgment to yeah. really decide which party to go. So yeah. we should abandon capitalism if we really want to move forward. Yeah. So long we continue to uh, uh, have this uh, body marriage with capitalism, body marriage with politics of investment, body marriage with people that will reprise their way and get political office set on it, body marriage with uh, nepotism, uh, 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 psychopathism, and body marriage with uh, kleptonic uh, uh, stealing of public uh, blunder. So mm. long we don't take public appointment at mm. such a trust by God and believe that we will be accountable before God in the hereafter, so long uh, 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 the, the nation, I would say, is in the sorry state of development, and so long we can never get it right, and so long we will never be an exemplary nation that mm. will be seen as a leader in Africa and in the black world. Mm. And that is the reason why the whole world, the uh, advanced countries are looking at us with disdain and mm. disgrace.
Lastly, lastly, Barista, before we let you go now, it's about time we have to go for on a break. Uh, but then, how do we safeguard the system from this current impunity that we're seeing? A situation where people will sit down, share, you know, monies that are meant for development of, of, of the, the citizens without any recourse, without any remorse. People coming out to even justify what they do, you know, spending public resources, diverting public resources and... And, and even, I mean, defending it, to say that they have to take part, you know, in whatever is, is, is being allocated to them uh, for, for this project and so on. Uh, for instance, take, 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 take for instance what happened, you know, during one of the probes, you know, in the NDDC, uh, you know, a group of people telling you that they have to share 1.5 billion Naira, and not only them, including security personnel as part of palliatives, and they see that as you know, normal. Nobody seems to see it as even abnormal. So it is their right to take part in, to, uh, part in it. Again, we see how appointment, political appointment as, as being seen as a license, as an avenue for you to make money. In fact, if you don't even get money out of it, your, your relatives and your friends will tell you that you are not smart. You are given a license, a ticket to, to, to steal or to make money, but you fail to do that. How do we safeguard the system? Uh, from this impunity uh, for, for us to be able to, I mean, uh, uh, address this issue of monumental corruption? Well, first of all, political office holders should really learn to be sincere, to match whatever they are saying with practical sincerity. What President Buhari promised this country as, as far as this will fight against corruption is concerned is a reverse of that we are seeing today. Uh, he promised us that we saw him as a person of exemplary character, a person of impeccable integrity, a person that will serve as a model for the whole world to be emulated. But unfortunately, going by the intricacies of the uh, 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 personalities that surround him, going by his inability to penalize anybody, going by the rituals that have even uh, turned out into a tradition in Nigeria of money making, then it's unfortunate. Honestly speaking, I don't even know where I will be headed to. Because mm. in a situation whereby uh, people are even using the corrupt money to shield themselves against corruption, and nobody is doing anything, nobody is saying anything. There is no sector in the Nigerian government now that is not visible by corruption. We are not seeing anything being done. Mm. The legislature are not ready to really uh, improve in the stringent laws. The executive are not ready to drag on those people and deal with them decisively. The, 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 the judiciary too, I look warm because which is the matter, it is the matter before them, the subject to determination of the sophistication of the of, of the weaponry of the language and the technicalities of the lawyers before them. So I don't really really know where we will we'll be headed to. If you say we should pray, even our religious leaders are accomplices to this corruption because they are part and parcel of those that will come with uh, uh, the of luxurious type of uh, 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 sermons to their followers so, so that at the end of it, uh, there will be uh, 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 short uh, 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 minded support uh, uh, towards uh, those in power. So, generally mm. speaking, I don't know where I'll be heading to mm. because I'm really disappointed, I'm really mm. disenchanted, uh, 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 I'm really confused when it comes to the issue of fight for them. Mm. But if President Buhari cannot do it, then I really continue to ask myself who else can do it. Uh, we need to see uh, 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 what the evolution of uh, future leaders will bring in the country. Mm. But for now, uh, uh, the future is clear. Thank you very much, Barista. Uh, it's a hopeless situation, as you painted, but I think there should be light at the end of the tunnel. We have to, it is our country, we have to continue to talk about it, we have to continue to engage each other, we have to continue to, uh, I mean, come together to deal with this canker one because it is retarding our development, it is affecting every facet of our life. Thank you very much, Barista, for talking to us. It's always my pleasure to be with you. Right. God bless Nigeria. Uh, amen. Now, that has been Barista Menesara Kugo Umar, an international and local affairs analyst. Together, we'll be looking at uh, tackling systemic corruption in Nigeria against the backdrop of rising cases of corruption, monumental and pervasive corruption uh, that have permeated into every aspect of our system, every aspect of our uh, life, and every aspect of our governance. Uh, we'll take a short break. When we return, as I told you, we'll be engaging another personality. Uh, you know, on the same topic, but then from different uh, perspective, uh, stay with us. We'll be back in a moment.
Thank you very much for staying with us on Dialogue. And this morning, our talking point, of course, is tackling systemic corruption in Nigeria. And uh, just before we went on that short break, we had uh, an interface with uh, Barista Menesara Kugo Umar, who has given us his perspective on why corruption is embedded in our system and how it can be tackled. Um, right now, we are joined by Professor Sheh Usman Adamu Donfulani. Uh, he's a politician, an academic, he's also a health expert, uh, talking about a public health expert. Uh, Professor Sheh Usman Adamu Donfulani is one of the uh, few Nigerians, so to speak, that have labored you know, to bring uh, the APC government on board. Uh, he's one of the close allies of President Muhammad Buhari. Uh, he is of recent also been seen in the social media lamenting, you know, some of the, uh, the, the situation the country has found itself, you know, uh, uh, even in the hands of the APC, which, is, which was uh, still perhaps a promising political party that was seen to come with that uh, notion to change, you know, what is going on in Nigeria, especially the corruption, the endemic corruption. Uh, thank you very much, Professor Adamu, uh, Shewa Adamu, for t joining us. Uh, thank you very much for having me, and good morning, our dear listeners. Right. Uh, let, me, let me take a cue from, you know, one, one of the statements made by our previous uh, uh, guest, talking about uh, Barista Menesara. He did say that he is, he is afraid, you know, uh, that if President Muhammad Buhari, who is being seen uh, to have, you know, an impeccable character, uh, a personality who is seen to be incorruptible and a personality who is seen to have Nigeria at heart, uh, fail to fight corruption. And corruption, you know, um, I mean, proceed even right before his, uh, his eyes. Then who else will be able to fight corruption in Nigeria? It appears to be a hopeless situation and the country has found itself, especially in the fight against uh, graft. Let me get your perspective on how you feel as one of those who have worked hard, you know, to bring this change that we're talking about. Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, the producer. Good morning, uh, viewers and mm. listeners said earlier. Mm. Uh, looking at the issue of corruption uh, in Nigeria, uh, unfortunately, mm. we have allowed it to become part of our own culture. Uh, culture with our uh, norms and values. Uh, people no longer detect corruption. You find that corrupt practices are even taking place in the exempted religious uh, races. There are really corruption in churches where fund meant for church activities are uh, being embezzled. There are uh, corruption also in mocks. Uh, mocks committees are uh, settled with the responsibility of the state and building new mocks. You find that money is being embezzled. Mm. So, Having said that, it has uh, finally uh, gotten into our culture mm. that people are no longer detecting it will make the fight against corruption extremely difficult for Mr. President. Mm. Uh, one good thing is that his impeccable character is not in question. Everybody knows that he is not corrupt and he's ready to fight corruption. Mm. However, naturally, uh, since we have allowed it to be so endemic, corruption is uh, fighting back. Uh, having said that, if you look at his efforts so far, you will find that during the APC administration, there is the highest number of convictions uh, obtained against corrupt uh, officers, mm. including jailing of former governors, which hitherto will be considered something uh, impossible. Mm. But still, despite that success and the recoveries made from countries like uh, UK, US, and the United Arab Emirates that are supporting Nigeria and repatriating money is uh, looted back to Nigeria, you find that still there are bottlenecks, there are spanners in the work that are being thrown, because the people that are supposed to make laws that will fight the corruption itself, hmm. most of them have corruption cases to answer. Hmm. You find that senators that are supposed to make laws that will now help in fighting corruption have themselves corruption cases to answer. Hmm. And without, without making institutional changes, institutional reform, and particularly uh, on the legal aspect of it, uh, that is successful uh, legal transformation, positive of having a positive legal system, the mm. fight against corruption will not be successful. Mm. Uh, Cote d'Ivoire and Senegal, they are mm. African countries that have succeeded in reducing uh, corruption. 
reduction in their countries uh, drastically. However, they have not done it as a result of the impeccable character of one person. They have succeeded in doing it because of the presidents that have the character, the impeccable character to do it, just like we have my President Muhammad Buhari. However, they did an institutional reform and had a positive legal system. Hmm. But where you have cases of corruption against people that are sitting in Senate chambers, against people that are ministers, particularly those in the Senate, you can see the recent overturn of the judgment of uh, Oji Kalu, hmm. who went back to the Senate and is being cheered after coming out from prison for corruption charges. Hmm. You can equally see the magnanimity of all these corrupt cases that are surrounding some of the ministers, as you have said. This is true, because some of them have their own past experience, and as you know, a political party is an open system. It's just an open market system. Hmm. Nobody will say, okay, Mr. A, Mr. B, Mr. C, should not come into ABC, because they have corrupt uh, past. Hmm. Political party, because you are constitutional right, you can join any party, anytime, irrespective of your past Professor, uh, uh, pro pro Also being accused. Now against him by mm. the former uh, commission executive secretary mm. or whatever, against the senator himself, who is a serving senator. And mm. by law, he doesn't have any immunity, he can be uh, investigated and mm. taken to court. Yeah. Uh, so if you look at such situation, he has been overwhelmed by by, by the corruption and the corrupt uh, activity. But sincerely speaking, mm. going by the record, even though the transparency index mm. has not significantly changed. But physically within the country, you can see, yes, there is uh, a lot of significant progress being made. But then, yeah. much cannot be achieved. Right, Pro without, Professor. Uh, transformation of institutional reform and a sound, positive legal system. Right, uh, Professor. Right, Professor, you, you, you mentioned some of the fault lines, uh, but then uh, the moral ground, you know, to fight corruption seems not to be there in the first place. Um, how do you think it is possible to fight corruption with people who, you know, are also being accused of corruption? And how do you think it is possible uh, to, to fight corruption to a standstill when perhaps a government is harboring people who have questionable characters, people who are accused of being corrupt. How do you think it is possible to do that? Are we not paying a lip service to this fight against corruption? Well, uh, as I have told you clearly, it's not possible for one single individual mm. to fight corruption as President Muhammad Bahari is trying to do without a, an institutional reform. Mm. If there is no law in mm. country, that says once you are under investigation, or once there is an allegation against you, then you must step aside and keep all government responsibilities that you have been shared with until after the investigation. But in this case, the law says until you are convicted. So even if there is an allegation against a minister, there is no law that says that minister should be fired or should be suspended. 
the law says, okay, he should be taken to court, and until there is a conviction, then we can now be relinquished of his power, office or something. Mm -hmm. So we need to change actually the system and make stringent laws. Mm -hmm. For instance, Mahu is now being investigated, mm -hmm. and he has been asked to stay aside by the committee conducting the investigation. So we should have a standing committee like that one that is investigating Mahu mm -hmm. that will now be investigating other ministers and ask those ministers to also step aside. There are allegations that uh, are mm -hmm. proposed against, uh, put forward by some mm -hmm. people against uh, the Minister of Justice and the Attorney General. There are allegations against the Minister of uh, Niger Delta. Mm -hmm. There are allegations against so many other heads of government and heads of government agencies. Mm -hmm. But there is no law. Mm -hmm. There is no law that says, okay, this is what should be done when you are under investigation. Mm -hmm. And the president himself cannot just wake up in a day and say, okay, I am suspending all of you that are under investigation. Mm -hmm. It will look as if it, uh, their right has been trapped because according to the law, we have to go to the court and secure a conviction. Mm -hmm. So something is wrong somewhere. Okay. We need to do a legal reform and mm -hmm. agree that, okay, this is the system we are going to plan all corruption cases. Ah, but for the sake of integrity of mm. the president and the government, mm. there is not a wrong if you can call those people that he appointed them and advise them to step aside. Okay. Then when the investigation is complete, mm. I'm not going to remove you as my minister. Mm. However, now to the public that you are taken aside and you are not going to attend some executive council meeting and sit down with us and deliberate and bring further memos, which may also contain corrupt practices in that. Okay, uh, uh, and to step aside. Yes. You can see the former secretary to the government was, was removed by, by, by the president and replaced as a result of uh, corruption charges. Uh -huh. And I believe that is what he should do also. Any minister or his agency, even though there is no law, mm. but he is the person that appointed them and he has the capacity mm. to remove them at any point. Um, so um, uh, professor. To step aside until after investigation. Yes, Professor. Professor, to, what? When they come back and take over their yeah, Professor, what would that change? Because, yes, talking about suspending people, removing them and all of that, uh, but you hardly hear about them being prosecuted. For those that are being prosecuted too are still within the corridors of power, for instance. And again, we're talking about, you know, institutional and legal reforms. Uh, at the same time, we are also battling, uh, you know, to see, I mean, that the fight against corruption became collective because, just like you said, one man cannot do it. Um, so how do we reconcile these issues? Because we cannot, I mean, afford to allow people to continue to wreak havoc on our economy, continue to uh, uh, engage in corruption with impunity. The, the situation, as I have told you, has been unfortunately uh, enshrined into becoming our culture as a norm and value. Mm. Because the citizens themselves, are the first group that are supposed to stand up to fight against this corruption. Because, uh, however, you find that in Nigeria, if someone is appointed into offices that he will have access to public funds, people will come and congratulate him. His community will give him traditional title. And if he is to be prosecuted, his people in from his community will start demonstrating. If he is a Christian, the Christian community will say he is being uh, prosecuted because he is a Christian. If he is a Muslim, the Muslim community. So we have to, as a society, mm. agree that, look, what we are doing mm. is wrong, and we need to stop it. Mm. We have people that are administering our funds at lo as local government chairman. Mm. We have people administering people's funds as governors. Mm. But I believe there are local governments that since the day those local governments were created, no single individual from that local government has ever written a letter to the chairman or to the office of the chairman requesting how the fund of that local government is being spent. Mm. So Nigerians need to come up with a system, mm. a pressure group that will checkmate the executive and everybody and force them to mm. do the needful. But if we stay as citizens and we are celebrating corrupt people with traditional title mm. and agreeing that I, God has, 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 has bought his bride, he is now appointed and so so place is going to make money, the system will continue because those that are corrupt are being rewarded. Mm. And then the judicial system itself mm. needs to be completely overhauled. Mm. And the unfortunate
fortunate system is that the people that will sit and make the law that will establish a tribunal or that will empower the court of conduct tribunal or that will empower efcc or that will set up a special uh, judicial commission for mm. corruption and the people in the legislative somebody that mm. they themselves have corruption case mm. and are awaiting trials or on, are undergoing trials mm. so if it will not be possible for them to make such laws mm. then there is need to be a sort of referendum in the country mm. someone should initiate it even the president can do so that yes we need that even if it is going to be written in the constitution mm. as the constitution around stated the court the, the judicial process let there be a session for, for convicting uh, mm. corrupt people and mm. lots of people of impeccable character be appointed into such court mm. by the time people are jailed mm. by the time you know when you serve as the governor you will end up uh, in jail like we have uh, two mm. governors now former governors in jail nobody mm. will touch people's money yeah professor so uh, they are taking this thing and they are going to mm. free mm. yes so professor there is no any law that says you shouldn't do it or mm. the law that says you shouldn't do it can be jeopardized by the judicial system itself mm. when you now find because there are allegations of corruption even among the judges mm. that okay there's some past uh, some of the cases uh, mm. of corruption mm. so we have to do it a holistic approach mm. the okay. citizens, our orientation needs mm. to change mm. we have to because the corruption is not only affecting is now ratifying and affecting the entire system mm. if you look at this degeneration of law and order Professor. Those allegations are as a result of the belief mm. that okay, somebody is taking somewhere, so mm. I should also take because nothing will be done. Right, Professor. Um, looking at you know the situation and the fact that uh, I don't know if you would agree that you know some people have this notion uh, that the the APC as a party or the P APC government is failing. You know, it's in in delivering one is cardinal. Uh, promises talking about fighting corruption before the the advent or the coming of the APC um, a number of elements I mean within the APC uh, the progressives you were making mockery of the, uh, the, the, the the ruling PDP then uh, even accusing it of failing to distinguish between stealing and corruption and all of that and here we are with a, a change government a government that came with the promise of change uh, with all the integrity and the, 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 the capacity, if there is, you know, to fight corruption, also enmeshed in corruption. Even the frontline people fighting corruption in this government are also being accused of corruption. So, have we gotten the, the value, you know, have Nigerians gotten the value for what they have elected? Or is the APC also, has the APC also failed like the PDP did? Well, uh, the answer to your question is going to be uh, a very simple one. Mm. Because between failure and success in this issue of fighting corruption is a very thin line. Mm. The question is, has there been any improvement in the way government funds have been managed in Nigeria? The answer is yes. Is there still corruption? People are embezzling government funds. Still the answer is yes. So mm. now looking at the two, we now measure the degree to which the improvement in the utilization of government funds has improved, and then the degree at which the embezzlement, which is part of significant part of corruption, mm. has also uh, increased, or has it taken a decline? Mm. But significantly, we can see yes, Nigerians have seen a reduction in embezzlement, particularly at the central level, where the president mm. has tightened uh, the issue of the TSA. Uh, uh, MDAs are no longer allowed to spend all their earnings recklessly. It is mm. being spent under control. Mm. And also the issue of uh, bunkering and other things have been stopped. Mm. However, mm. as a political party, mm. APC itself was formed as a result of amalgamation. Mm. Amalgamation.
amalgamation and merger of CTC, amalgamation uh, also with people that came mm. in from the PDP. Mm. So, unfortunately for us in Nigeria, we have not developed a culture of a single political party alignment that people believe in their uh, ideology. Uh, If I understand, we're, we're still running the same cycle now. As much as the political system mm. itself will remain corrupt, mm. people will give money to party officials mm. openly. Right. Party executive will receive money mm. openly and place the highest bidder right. to the political position. Um, and then the electorate will themselves collect mm. money mm. to elect person that gives them the highest amount of money at the polling mm. point. Mm. So we are going to continue from okay. where we are. Okay. All right. And thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Professor. We, we have to come to uh, the end of the discussion this morning. I thank you very much uh, for your perspective on this uh, issue. I appreciate you having me on your program. Thank you so much, and I hope we will find a way, God mm. will help us find a way, mm. and we will have the determination to fight corruption in Nigeria and before it actually kills the country, I mean, the President has said. I mean, thank, 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 you. thank you very much. Professor Sheh Usman Adamu uh, uh given us his perspective on the best way to tackle uh, systemic corruption in Nigeria. Uh, on his behalf and uh, everyone that has uh, contributed to the success of the program, my name is Shafiu Suleiman uh, saying uh, stay home and stay safe uh, so that we can see tomorrow. Good morning.